welcome to the Mad Mad Mel podcast. We're now on to episode seven and this is a podcast primarily about knitting and spinning and fibery goodness and also other fiber related crafts as and when I do them. Um, we live, I, I live, my name is Mel and we live on um, one of the Orkney Islands off the north coast of Scotland and I live here with my husband and my kitties and um, when I'm not dyeing or spinning or um, knitting you can usually find me around our small holding we have some animals some chickens and some ducks and we also have uh, we grow our own vegetables when we're not we're actually renovating at the moment so there isn't many vegetables grown this year but we usually grow quite a lot of our own food as well if you are a returning viewer thank you for coming back if you are a new viewer now you know a little wee bit about me. <laughs> I'm also a indie botanical yarn dyer and I sell my yarns on the island here and also on Etsy. And if you want to find me anywhere on social media, you can find me anywhere you want uh, known as Mad Madamel. Though I am primarily active on Instagram. Okay, I guess I should really get into the bulk of the podcast. I haven't podcasted for uh, a few weeks now. I took a bit of a break. I had my youngest son visiting um, during his college break. And uh, after that, I returned to Southampton where he's at college and had a little bit of time there before moving on to Glastonbury for a short like holiday retreat and some uh, sport like a sporting weekend away following the end of my holiday though I will speak a little wee bit more about that towards the end so we we'll forget into fibery stuff first I have a lot of spinning we had two de fleece over the uh, July period yes three weeks in first ish three three weeks in july or would it be the last three last three weeks of july round about that time anyway so i have quite a bit of spinning and but first i'll touch briefly on knitting there hasn't been as much as usual due to the spinning but there is some so first of all finished knitting objects i have two finished objects and I have to get these in done, recorded today because one of them is a gift for my mum and she's arriving in a couple of hours on to visit for a holiday so the first one is a gift for my mum so I've been trying to work through some of my stash I have a very large stash upstairs excuse me I've got a bit of a cold so I've got a, a bit of a tickly nose at the moment um, I have a large stash all the yarns from really older projects I have a very large mm, cringeworthy really large drops stash left over from before I knew any better about their uh, ethics as a company and also when I had less funds to spend but I do have a large stash of it and I am determined to work through it alongside some of my nicer yarns and my hand spun as I'm not going to get rid of it or throw it out just because I know better now but I have a large stash and I will use it up so the first one was some of my old yarns I had some leftover yarn from when I made a crochet design I did a, a fox um, cowl crochet design and um, which I upped and loaded onto Ravelry and I had some yarn left over um, it was knit in uh, it was knit in Debbie Bliss Rialto Chunky and I had some quite a bit left well a bit left of black and undyed or white or undyed left over from that design and I decided to want to use it up so I used it up alongside also a wee bit of something else and I used I came up with or I didn't come up with I used a pattern of Ravelry but I made a cowl in a how oh, that's the back joint ignore that in a hound's tooth check design which I thought it was so easy to do and so clever. I'm not sure if that would be technically upside down. Probably be that way up. I think it's so clever and it's knitted. And it was so easy as well. It's got an unusual stitch in it um, every other round where you kind of knit into the stitch below. It was a bit confusing. I had to look it up on uh, YouTube and I can't remember what it's actually called proper name for the stitch is called I'll try and remember to put it up on the screen here so you can look it up on YouTube because the instructions on the pattern was a little confusing but the pattern is called Hound's Tooth Check Cowl and it's a free pattern on Ravelry and uh, it was really easy to find and it was really quick knit up really really quickly stood and 
the edging was to use up um, some other yarn I had left over, which was left over. I bought this donkeys years ago when I was on holiday. Um, and I used it to knit myself a cowl and it's Wendy Norse Chunky, which you, I don't even know if you can still get it, but it was in colorway porpoise. I'm not sure what the color numbers are for the black and the white, but yeah, the black and white. Um, so this will be going, getting wrapped up within the next couple of hours because mum's coming and that's going to be her birthday present or one of her birthday presents. It was her birthday a couple of weeks back. So, and it is bigger than that. It's not that tiny. <laughs> Um, so that was my first finished object. I'll just put that to one side. My second finished object, I'm, I've adjusted my angle this time. Oh, tickle, tickle. I've adjusted my angle this time um, in the hope that the lighting is a wee bit better. It's not as direct onto me, but I'm hoping it, the light's going to blow out a little less when I turn my head, as it was pretty bad last time. I have got plans to order a light box. Um, I just keep forgetting. I need to write it on my to-do list. So my second finished object was something for myself. I want something nice and quick for myself and I made a pair of wrist warmers out of Drops Alaska, which I think is 100% wool. So I'll have to be careful these don't felt because they are wristies and they will get washed quite regular. And this is the wristies. Oh, that's one of the wristies. ta -da. See the light is blowing out on my face there. But uh, there we go. And the pattern is a free Ravelry pattern again. And it is called the Through the Stones Gauntlet. I'll put the other one on as well. I had a bit of a trouble with these. I made a mistake. No, I didn't make a mistake. I dropped uh, some stitches. One evening, it was really late. It was, we'd finished watching a movie. I'd been knitting. And I dropped, dropped some stitches in the middle of the cable patterning and I had a trouble, real trouble picking them up but I did and then I carried on knitting and I realised when I was getting this section that I had twisted, I hadn't twisted, I hadn't twisted them properly because it was in the middle and I thought oh I'm just going to leave it, I'm just going to leave it and I knit the whole gauntlet and then I knit the other one and as you can see the braids kind of go across here and then they go straight up and then they go across there again. I will take that one off so you can see. But the braids run in the same direction at each end. Well, it just didn't look right. So, the second one I wasn't happy with. The first one, rather. The second one was great. First one I wasn't happy with. The only thing, actually, which reminds me, the only change I made to this pattern was I added thumb holes. You should really wear them as gauntlets. Um, they're inspired by the ones worn on the Outlander TV series and they should be worn just as gauntlets with the whole hand open but I added a small thumb hole to each because I like wrist warmers but I also I can wear them as gauntlets and they're not really I don't know if I can twist my arm like that they're only a wee little hole so I could wear them as gauntlets anyway but I wasn't happy on the first one, so what I should have done was just rip the whole thing back and start again. But I thought, oh, it's going to take ages. It probably wouldn't have took that long. But instead, I picked up the stitches lower, like after where the mistake had been. And I thought, I'll unpick all that section, pull it all back and knit it the opposite way. Because the way, if you, if you look at the cabling goes that way, but if you turn it that way, it also still goes that way. So it wouldn't make a difference if I just follow the pattern and just work out where my rows were and my thumb hole and such like. That's such a carry on and picnic. It would have been quicker. It took me a whole evening of watching the movie to unravel the section. It would have been easier just to knit the whole thing. But anyway, they're done and I like them. I love them. They're to replace a pair of other charcoaly grey wristies that I've had for quite a few years in acrylic. Which is the decent pair of wristies, but I wanted something in wool. So these are basically to replace them. Um, I'd like to replace the majority of my older knitwear with woolen stuff rather than 
acrylic um, but I will still keep a couple of acrylic because sometimes acrylics useful um, I have a pair of small quite thin brown wristies they're sort of like this sort of a length and I keep them in my um, garden jacket my, my, my garden and jacket and they're useful if if I'm potting in the potting shed or pricking out seedlings or anything in the garden because it doesn't matter if they get dirty I can just throw them in the washing machine and it's not a problem I don't have to hand wash them so acrylic has its place in certain circumstances and that would be definitely one of them I don't want to get these muddied up and then have to um if I was to hand wash they would never really come clean if you get them really really dirty from gardening so so that's my second finished object and I think it's my only knitted finished object um, I have some whips of knitting but not finished ones or if I have I've completely forgotten about them and put them away so on to knitting whips I have uh, I have actively I have got two knitting whips I've got at least two others that are kind of, they're not hibernate, but I haven't worked on them since last time. So, whilst I was away, I was flying south and I was only taking hand luggage and I was going to be flying back as well. So, I was a bit concerned about taking knit, taking, take, taking knitting on the plane. I wanted to take my knitting away, did not want to lose my circular, my regular circular needles, my knit pros, whilst I was away. So, I decided I took some old bamboo ones and every time I say that I think of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang all the time my old bamboo circulars and I put them in the bottom of my knitting bag and left didn't put any wool on them before, when I went south when I flew away I took all my wool ready to cast stuff on for whilst I was away and then when I came back I um, put all my working yarn onto scrap yarn just in case if I got to the airport and security and said no you can't have those I wouldn't have to whip them out my work I could just chuck them in the bin it'd be fine they were all bamboo it didn't matter if I threw them in the bin because they were ancient and cheap and it didn't really matter um and my yarn wouldn't be all loose and live knocking about in my knitting bag so that's what I did and fortunately I went through security three times twice going south one coming north and I didn't have a problem they just didn't pick them up I put I did put a pencil and a pen in the bottom as well but you know just it's just a bunch of pencils you know so I'd cast on two projects whilst I was away the first one is just a simple vanilla sock I've been itching to cast this yarn on because I fell in love with this colorway um, and it's whoops I'm gonna drop it because it's snagged just a second there we go um, ignore the tour for the second for, for the second for the moment the body of the sock is the colorway and it's by, I never know how to pronounce this, is it Sidor, Sidor, and it's Heart and Soul, it's a commercial sock yarn, and the colourway is called Country Bumpkin, and I just love the kind of vintagey, cottagey colourways, the colours that's in there, I just, I just love it, and my, I have a little progress keep on there. And there's a little Halloween puddy tat. I if I can get it to focus. Probably not. And that's from Fripperies and Bibelots. I love her stitch keepers. I make my own stitch keepers. I still love her stitch keepers. But the toes, what, when I knit a pair of socks, I use on roughly between 60 and 70 grams of yarn. So if I have a ball of commercial yarn, which is generally 100 grams, I could get two pairs of socks out of that same colourway, which I always buy colourways I really like. I could get two pairs of socks if I use another yarn as toes and heels. So, last time I did some yarn dyeing for my Etsy shop update, I decided to um, dye up a small ball of my yarn. And the colour is not going to show very well on this. Oh, do, 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 do with um, a weak madder root solution to make this kind of really pale apricot colour. I would go so far as say it's almost magnolia. Um, but it's a really pale apricot colour. And it come out really well. It's kind of showing up a bit more cream on camera. It should be more 
it's slightly peachier it's kind of midway between those two colors there if I can get no it's not going to show but it is definitely more of a, a pale apricot rather than the cream that's showing it's very subtle and it works perfect it, like, you can't tell it wasn't made for these socks it's perfect perfect kitty cat perfect and I love them and I'll just keep working on them whilst I'm traveling or if I'm watching something on an evening where I don't want to have to concentrate um last night we watched a movie uh, we watched Guardians of the Galaxy 2 that was hilarious we're working when I was away I took um my two boys my youngest and my oldest to the cinema and we went to see Ant-Man 2 because we'd seen the first one together yeah a few years back and me and my husband are kind of lost lost track not lost track but not watched the most recent of Marvel movies uh, so we need to get caught up so we've been kind of watching the last few of the older ones last night was the first one we'd watched that we hadn't watched yet which is Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 so funny I got into like two minutes of the movie and I'm like I can't knit during this it's just <laughs> I can't even knit a sock during this I didn't knit anything it was just I had to just watch the film um so anyway sock knitting for when you're watching something you need to you don't need to focus on you do need to focus on but last night I had to focus too much so that's my first whip and I'm just using my usual vanilla sock pattern for it um I want to try a few different ones. I have a few sock patterns. I really want to knit um, Audrey from Yarn, Yarn Flakes podcast, her uh, Little People socks. I've already bought the pattern. I have it printed out ready. Um, I'm not sure which colour way to knit it in. Probably something a lot plainer because it has... It's uh, textured. So I'm not sure yet, but I really want to cast that on really soon. I, in fact, there's lots of things I want to cast on right now. Really itching to start so many knitting projects, but I can't. But my usual vanilla sock pattern is this one, which is a free one in Ravelry. Vanilla sock with gusset and choice of reinforced heel by Jill Tom. I know it, it could do with a more exciting name. And it's a pain in the butt to read it every time I cast on a pair of socks on the podcast. Um, but I like it. I like the construction. It's a toe up. I use a 2.25 millimeter needle um, magic loop method. Um, I'm quite a loose knitter, although I think it's getting slightly snugger my knitting. Um, but I am a loose knitter, so it's 2.25 for me, which I think is a US size one. It might be on here actually. The 2.5 is one and a half, so it must be a US size one. Um, so, yep, that is my first whip. And my second one is my first pair of colourway mittens. I'm joining in with uh, Ellie of Skin Deer's Year Long Mitt Along, which is to knit six pairs of colourway mittens throughout 2018. Uh, unfortunately, I've only just started, so I really need to get my skates on. Though I do have the yarn and the patterns for six pairs I want to make. A couple of them are wristy, wrist warmers rather than mittens, but that's fine as long as the colour work, full colour work. Um, but this is my first mitten pattern. And continuous of, I've done very little colour work before. I have done colour work, but very little, not much at all. I think I've done a hat and something else I can't think. There is something else as well. So I'm quite new to colour work. I finished one mitten. These were supposed to be... A to go in the gift box but I think I'm going to keep these ones for myself and knit a gift in another colourway because I quite like these for myself because they fit lovely and there's number one ta -da. I'm really pleased with that look ah. that's the palm this one this pattern is Flora by Elliot Skin Deer and I've done the contrast colour on the cuff in a different colourway to on the mitten and that was because I w wasn't sure I would have enough of this contrast colour and it turned out that was right I didn't have enough uh, I would not I would have run out so I'm glad I did that um the it is a 
I would call it a, I don't know what colour you would call that. It's a funny shade of green. Um, background colour, and that's in Drops Charisma. I told you I have a big stash of drops to get through. The contrast colour is a mystery yarn. It is this one. And it's got, it's like a, I don't know, it's like an, a beige off-white with like little tiny, they're not even speckles, but it's kind of little bits of green and pink in it. Um, you can kind of see, it's it's not all one colour, but uh, it's pretty. And I think it's just a acrylic yarn, it was left over in my stash. Um, probably not the best idea mixing acrylic with wool, but I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be fine. Um, so that's what I've used for the cuffs. And the main part of the mitten, I've used this yarn, which is it's still attached, um, which is just a pale yellow. Again, acrylic. It looked paler on there than it actually is. It's a bit more, a bit more, a little bit more yellow. And you can kind of see it's a bit more yellow on the on the the mitten. And I'm really rather pleased. The thumb is got like a little. Flower, this is called Flora. There is a few mistakes, don't look too hard. Um, and as I've worked on the second mitten, my stitches have become a lot more even, which I'm really pleased with. And I've just started changing how I hold my yarn. I've, there is mistakes on this, so there's another reason not to really have it in the gift box. They've got ones I've like, how the hell have I managed to do that? Like, here, I have got. A green stitch instead of a yellow stitch and I have a half yellow half green stitch no idea how that out um, mitten number two is most of the way done I've got that far and right at the top is where I've changed how I'm holding my contrast yarn and the stitches are much more even than they are lower down which you probably can't see but I'm sure once I've knitted more I'll be able to tell and I've yet to do the thumb for this one and I've done the picking up when you do the do, do mittens you put these stitches on contrast yarn and you cast off these stitches and then you pick them rip back up again but I, I really struggled with picking up those cast off stitches on the first one so this time I have put both sets of stitches on contrast yarn and I will pick them up and I will knit the, I, I, how did I do it? Instead of, you would cast off in the colours of the stitches in pattern, if that makes sense. But because I've picked them up, that, those stitches haven't been done yet. So when I pick them up, I will knit those stitches in the right colours. And then I'll carry on with the, as the pattern said. And I'm hoping that's going to work out okay, but we shall see. It's experimenting. Um, the cuffs, there's a little wee bit of puckering on this cuff. I obviously wasn't concentrating very hard, but concern, I've not blocked these. The first one I haven't blocked or anything. I haven't even woven in the ends yet. So I'm rather pleased. And it's just so pretty. This is, I was going to put this aside for some people. And I think I'm going to keep these and knit these ones again and do them in, I don't know, maybe the same green, but maybe for the pink. Flower. I don't know yet. I'll see what there is and see what I've got you to use up. What leftovers I've got to use up. So that is my second work in progress. Now, for knitting plans for the future, I've got tons, absolutely tons. But I'm only going to mention the next one I really want to cast on, which is another pair of colorette mittens, not those ones. And it will be another of Ellie's patterns, which is the pumpkin spice mittens. They're going to take a lot longer because they're in fingering weight. Um, but autumn's here. Well, autumn is definitely here in Orkney. Yesterday I went out to feed the chickens and I got half around the corner of the drive and I just had to stop because I just thought it smells just like autumn. And when I was feeding the chickens, I thought, what's all that row? And I look across the fields and there was huge flocks of geese coming in and of uh, Canada geese. And that is the sound of autumn when the wind is not blowing that is the sound of autumn here it's the leaves are falling and um we don't really get them turning autumnal brown they're just kind of crisp up and drop um 
we have our autumn's not really like what you think of autumn up here but it's very autumnal um and i'm just itching to do all the autumn things i want to cast on the autumn spice mittens i want to cast on an autumn sweater i want to spin autumn wool i'll just tell you about that in a bit um so yeah so i'm going to knit the pumpkin spice mittens and my two yarns are these two colors now i knit a test swatch before i went away in these because i wasn't sure this normally you would knit one in each um contrast way around whatever you want to call it um and i wasn't sure if i want to do that i want to know which way around i prefer best so when i knit my tension swatch i did half of it in one way around and half the other and you know what? i couldn't pick a, a favorite i love both of them so i will probably have a mitten of each one in reverse of the other and the this is yet yeah, more of that drop stash this is drops fable or farble which i believe is a sock yarn so it's actually got nylon in this as well which is fine um but they look fabulous i love that color I do like that colour. So that will be my next cast on, most likely. As soon as I finish those floor mittens, I will be casting on those mittens. And they're just in a... That's actually a makeup bag. Uh, what's that? Oh yes, that's the... That is the flora pattern. I'm showing you the pattern for that. Right, okay. So that's knitting. Now we've got spinning. Now there was a lot of spinning over July for the Tudor Fleece. So I'm not going to, I'm going to get through it as quickly as possible. Otherwise this podcast is going to end up hugely long. Um, I was part of Team LCB for the Tudor Fleece. And there was one or two challenges throughout and personal challenges. And I managed to do everything I set out to do and finish the last bit on the last night, which was First thing was I was short of bobbins. I knew I was going to be short of bobbins. So to free up a bobbin, I had a bobbin of um, a single of North Ronald C, uh, which is a local rare breed sheep, uh, on one of my bobbins. It had been sitting on that bobbin for a few years. So first thing I did was ply it back on itself. So this technically isn't a two de fleece spin, but it's a two de fleece ply. And this is North Ronaldsea. I love this. You know, I've had some North Ronaldsea I've felt in the shops before. And it's been really coarse. And I've had North Ronaldsea, which is beautifully soft. And this is really soft. It's lovely. I, if I remember rightly, when I prepped the fibre for this, I combed it first. Not excessively so. I combed it with, like you know, like a dog comb, like a pet comb. Um, just to take out any snags and really coarse um, guard hairs, although it wasn't really bad. And then I made little wee um, roll eggs, but I rolled them worsted style. If you don't know a lot about spinning, when you spin fibre, there's two ways of spinning fibre. All the fibres run, if you get something like um, roving, all the fibres are kind of parallel to, made mostly parallel to each other. All the fibres are like this. And when you spin, you spin the yarn from right through there, and all the fibres will be kind of straight, and you get a, a, a smooth-ish yarn. Um, the other way is to spin it woolen. To do that, you'd make a raw lag, and you would have your fibres which are all kind of like that but you would roll it let me think how I remember you would roll it this way and then you would spin from the side so you pull all the fibres and they kind of go all mishy mashy like this and that makes a woolen spun so when you get um, a knit to talk about the difference between a worsted and a woolen spun yarn a woolen spun is where the fibres are more messed up they're all mishmashy and they're interwoven and the advantage with that from a knitter's perspective is it makes a 
fl a fluffier yarn and a loftier squishier yarn but it also helps to trap air so if you're making something like a, a, a woolen iron sweater for example using a woolen spun yarn will make it a much warmer and squishier but mostly warmer trapping the air in garment than if you used a worsted spun yarn whereas if you wanted to knit something with um this is where it's going to be contradictory i was going to say a cable pattern but iron sweaters are usually cabled anyway but if you want to knit something with a lot of texture and you wanted the texture to be quite um had go have good stitch definition then a worsted spun yarn would be better for stitch definition than a woolen spun but like this is an iron sweater is a cable sweater so so this is actually worsted spun but even so it's still quite fluffy because it north ronald sea is fairly fluffy and hand spun is, tends to be is, is fluffier than um a commercially spun yarn anyway um so i think i've got about i don't know 50 grams there something like that and i have a lot of fleeces up in the loft to spin up I have plans to spin up a lot of grey in different tones. This is just a mixed grey, um, but I have various shades of grey I intend to spin up in various quantities. I want to make a Winter Sol by Jennifer Steingas, and I'm going to steak it and make a cardigan with three different shades of grey. That's the plan. I also have um, shades of like cream and buffs that I'm going to knit another sweater with and i can't remember what it's called but uh i will try and remember to put that up on the screen as well um so that was kind of the first spinny project then i had big plans for the rest of the fibers i had three bats that i bought at edinburgh yarn festival from louise of spin city and the plan was to use these spun and i must stop saying and every two minutes to spin them all to produce a big shawl called um, Intrusion, I believe it's called on Revelry. And I bought, don't need it again, three bats. Two bats to be spun together into one yarn and one bat to be spun separately. So the two bats that I spun together made this. Lovely. I believe the colourway is called Snow Queen which I'm going to assume is kind of a Frozen inspired one with those little shades of blue and white since there's loads of silver sparkle in this as well which isn't going to probably show up on camera so I have 200 grams of this and this was worsted spun from the bat so when you're spinning from a bat it's not a true worsted bat roving technically isn't true worsted um, but it's a little more mushy mash than if it was from roving and I have recorded I need to edit a video on how to prepare a fiber bat I have done that when I was doing these and to go with it was one of her bats this one which was called blue azurite which has got shades of blues and turquoise and bits of there's some rainbow fire star in there I have some of that and blue sparkle um, yeah blue sparkle and those are to go together and the shawl I'm planning on using them for uses like wedge it reminds me of one of Stephen West designs um, exploration station similar sort of thing you've got kind of bands that kind of taper and kind of overlap each other it's kind of similar but not the same but it's a similar sort of principle so those are going to look fab i wanted something that would contrast oh, there's my notes contrast but be kind of in the same color family and there's the turquoise from this is in this and there's a few different colors that are in both so that'll work nicely that was the one I finished on the last night. <laughs> Applying that, that took ages. Fingering weight, 200 grams worth, two ply. it took ages. They're both two ply as well. The next one was we needed, one of the challenges 
uh, the first challenge was to spin something you'd never spun before um, and or diff a technique you had never spun before so I decided to spin a cordless coil yarn I've never done this before it come out quite well it's got these wee little shells isn't that cute I have no idea what the hell I'm going to use this for that one's not so good that one's fab that one's quite good that one's meh there's quite a few of these in here and it's a single it hasn't been plied it's it hasn't been plied on it hasn't got more than one ply it's only got one single ply and these coils are made whilst you make this ply so they're not added on afterwards they're not often you make coils when you're spinning a core spun yarn core spun yarns where you have obviously a core and you wrap fiber around your core um as you spin but this hasn't got a core and normally when you make coils it would be on a core spun so you'd make a coil around your core in between spinning your regular fiber um this is a hundred percent merino and the blue the sh different shades of blue that was some fiber i hand dyed with indigo quite a long time ago and the white is just undyed merino so i have no idea i'm gonna use it for but it's fun maybe i'll no i still have no idea i'm gonna use it for i don't think i'll do it again like i said it, it was fine and i've tried it but i don't have any use for a fancy art yarn like that so. and the next fiber i spun actually i'm not sure which order these are in so i'm saying next it might not have been next was this one which is a colorway by created by lcb and it is called bonnie and i got 440 yards and it was a one of a kind on rambouillet this is the first time i've spun around that was it this was the challenge for to spin no i used a different one for another child anyway it was rambouillet i've never spun rambouillet before I loved it this was so easy to spin I didn't have to think about it I could watch TV without really concentrating whereas most of the other yarns I had to really concentrate even with a bat you really got to concentrate what you're doing this was just so easy to spin. this has got to be one of my new favorite fibers I love this and a pretty color but I just I fell in love with it when I saw it online I got this as one of my Christmas box ones last Christmas and it's got shades of greens and pale yellows and like a what you call that like a buff color and it's just so pretty and i have no idea i'm going to knit with it probably a shawl or shawlette with it it's kind of it's it's unusual fiber rambole it's 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 not soft i wouldn't say it was soft it is soft but it's not really soft like a merino but it's not scratchy so it's kind of it's got an, an unusual texture i really like it and none of these yarns have been twist set in them or anything yet i will get around to it before i put them away oh, i'm just throwing things on the floor next we had a um, challenge to spin something with a fiber we'd never worked with before or a fiber that we, a fiber wouldn't usually reach for so whether that be because you've never spun with it before or because you really don't like it or you've had a bad experience with it something like that and i chose to use two not fibers i've one of them i've never spun before and one of them i've spun in the technique before and i made this unusual yarn ignore the bit of sticky tape holding the ends together and what i did was i spun a single ply of kent romney which I've never used before, and a single ply of Rainbow Firestar, just pure Firestar. Um, let me get that to focus. Just, da, 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 da. It's not gonna work. Come on. Anyway, a single ply of Rainbow Firestar, um, which is 100% nylon, to make a sock yarn, and. I spun the Kent Romney slightly thicker and the nylon slightly thinner and the nylon I spun from the fold which basically means I will show you because I have the fiber I have Kent Romney which is this fiber which is quite a long 
oops so it's not going to focus on it it's quite a long staple length on the Kent Romney but it's quite I wouldn't say it's quite coarse but it's definitely on the coarser side I would say it's along the lines of Shetland but a much longer staple length than Shetland if I pull out a piece you can see how long that is it's not super long it's kind of like the blue face Leicester um, but to spin from the fold instead of spinning there and pulling it out and drafting you fold it over your finger and spin it you get snag it on your wheel there and draw it out that way like that which is a technique you would usually use for if you're spinning something like silk or something with a short staple length works quite well like that but I was just really struggling with the drawing of this so it's I spun the Kent Romney from the fold and I also spun the nylon from the fold and that's give me a nice sock this is going to be a sock Christmas socks look at the sparkle I mean, you're not going to see the sparkle but it's sparkly and the rainbow fire star the advantage we're doing from the fold with the rainbow fire star which if I get a piece of that this is rainbow fire star which basically means it's got all the colors of fire star in it in roving so if I kind of open that out you can see there's all these different colors now if I was to just pull on that end it's going to muddy up all those colors but if I fold it over my finger and spin it ignore my nail polish you spin it from the fold there it's going to pull out the first colour in line and then it'll pull out some of the next and then some of the next and some of the next and it'll work its way along here which means that when you get the yarn you get some short sections of different colours so like here we've got like an orangey colour and then here we've got like it's not going to show very well but it's like a blue color so as you knit you're going to get different sections rather than it just be all a mishmash so i have about 60 grams here but this isn't fingering weight it's come out kind of a sport weight I wouldn't go so far as to say double knit but it's definitely at least a sport weight so I'm not going to have enough for a pair of socks but if I spin up a wee bit more I might make some Rolex with the blended fire star and with the white just to vary it up a bit and use that for knitting the toes and the heels I can't just put the white plain Kent Romney because it's just not going to be strong enough or I could just do two strands of a regular sock yarn maybe held double to do the toes and heels I'm not sure yet but these are going to be my Christmas socks this year my Christmas cast on either for Christmas or during December we shall see and there's a cat scratching at my door bear with me come on then don't jump on there you just knocked she just knocked all the wool on the floor Right, come on, say hello. Hello, there's Lee Willow. Oh, she says. Oh, she says. Right. So, where was I? Oh yes, I've done the sock yarn, which is now on the floor. The last spin, which was another challenge spin. I did the the blues in amongst the different challenge days. Um, was to spin something predominantly green. And I did a course one. I don't particularly like doing course one. I don't know why I decided to do a course one. I just thought I'd do something different and it's a bit twisty but it's not too bad coarse buns are always a bit twisty and this is spun from a white and green and silver bat from frost yarn that I got for my birthday and the lights blowing out now for some reason um, but it come out quite well it's not too bad and I have plans to put this in a shawl at some point um, it's quite chunky though maybe i'll do a cow i'm not sure we shall see so that was all my spinning look at all these spinning spiders they're so pretty look pretty pretties pretty 
Oh, light's not going to shine. That's a shame. Anyway, that was spinning. So, moving on. I have a couple of acquisitions. One is a yarny one and others are fibery one. So my main pleased with, I'm always pleased, but pleased with acquisition is a skein of bling bling. I managed to snag in the last, the last uh, batch of Old Maiden Aunt Bling Bling for the Tits Out Collective. Isn't that just oh stunning? When I first saw it, I was just like, oh, I need to have it every time she had an update. They were all sold out so quick. And why is the light gone all strange? Stop it. Um, but it's beautiful. This was shades of burgundies and oh, just everything. Everything. And it's got sparkles, that gold sparkle. I've never really been not bothered about gold sparkle. I like silver sparkle. But I guess I've never really looked at gold sparkle properly. But I could definitely like get used to gold sparkle. I'm seeing gold sparkle on all sorts of colours in my future because it's just oh, so beautiful. And even though it's not Christmassy colours, it makes me feel all festive. This it's just it's autumnal, but it's also festival of all in one. So <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna knit with it. <clears throat> I can't decide whether to knit some really extravagant socks or a shawl but you know I've got 50 million shawl plans and you can only wear so many shawls in fact like today do I have a shawl on today no so how many shawls do I truly need but it's just so stunning oh it's, it is oh it's just stunning so um all been nant yarns bling bling oh it's gorgeous okay other acquisitions I put in an order from created by LCB for some more fiber. Half of it is has been put away for my Christmas box. So I can't touch that. Can't see it after show after Christmas. The other half kept out because it's going to be used before Christmas or during Christmas, and I'll explain. Now I've just got to pick a couple up because the cat knocked them on the floor. First of all is a colorway which is going to be my Christmas bin. I'm hoping to get the majority of my Christmas stuff, Christmas stuff you have to do, done by December, beginning of December, and then be able to spend the December doing the fun things like Christmas cookies and such like, and Christmas spins. So this is going to be my Christmas spin. Oh, look at that. The colour is called Christmas Time, funnily enough. And look at that red with that green. And then what I love about this is it's not just red and green. It's got like this bluey colour. And these colours, this burgundy colour. Well, maroony colour. And it's just beautiful. This is uh, Christmas time, like it says. Doo -doo -doo. And it is a, now I don't know how to say this. It's either chargy or targy. Uh, bamboo silk blend and it's really pretty I've seen she's just done this on a few different colorways um a few different colors a few different bases and I wasn't sure which to get it on but I've never actually spun with Targi Targi and actually I've never spun with no I was gonna say I've never spun with bamboo but I have but I definitely haven't spun with the first one you know, so I wanted to try spinning with that and it's just so pretty. So once December is here and all the Christmassy stuff's done, this will be my sit down and chill spin. But before we get to Christmas, we have autumn. I love autumn and I love Halloween, which reminds me, this year I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, planning on doing Vlogtober. I thought about September, I thought September's kind of a boring month in here in that household it's kind of catch up and chill out october on the other hand is just lots of things going on we've got i get quite excited i really like october i really like halloween um this is, this is a pig and hippie ah. so i have halloween itself and we've got sewing to do as well and there's halloweeny 
foods and autumn foods and I can't wait for roast pumpkin soup. We don't get pumpkins and squashes. The only squashes you can get up here all year round would be butternut squash. Which actually I use for the roast pumpkin soup so maybe I should just use it and do it any time. And we've got, I've got lots, anyway I've got lots of things that happens in October. And of course after that we've got Vlogmas coming up in December and I am hopefully doing Vlogmas as well. Just, I really get excited about the holidays really generally. Just In some ways the, the American, it, it, over in the States you've kind of got like a really long holiday season. Just like, just, just go from October and then you've got Thanksgiving, November and then Christmas. And just basically, it's just like three months of holidays. I was like, I've never really been a big holiday abroad type of person. Don't chew me notes. Well, Willow's just, she's just ripped off a piece of paper and like tossed it across the room and she shook her head. It was like, I wonder what it was. Um, we don't... If I was to go on holiday, and like dream holiday would be three months in in America somewhere where like in like I don't know Vermont because you know the colors oh, would be like uh, September October maybe it'd have to be four months but all through that autumn season October November December just did the whole the Christmas holidays in America that would be an experience completely different to the UK but just different um I don't think they have mince pies and fruitcake over there which is not necessarily a bad thing because I only like my own mince pies and my own fruitcake because I have my own recipes. So, Vlogtober and Vlogmas. Exciting stuff. They have lots of things happening in Christmas. And we go a little crazy here. With everywhere gets decorated in the house. It's just like mad. Anyway, calm down, calm down. Anyway, one of the things I want to do for autumn would be to, is to do an autumn spin. I fell in love with a colourway. That created the, by LCB made, um, and I had to have it. And it's this one, which I believe is called Pumpkin Ale. Let me just wrap that up a wee bit. Look at that! Oh my giddy aunt! There we go. Look at the colours on that. How autumnal can you get? Oh my goodness! And I also got a braid of. Spiced pumpkin, which it's just shown on camera, I have to roll it up. Um, which is basically one of the shades of orange, it's a tonal shade of orange, which complement the pumpkin ale. That. The orange there is in there. So these two together, this is going to be tricky. Try and wrap these up together. <clears throat> it's like, look at that! Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Put myself in the eye with it. That's going to be so pretty, and this is good. Definitely going to be a shawl, a large shawl, because it's two hundred. Well, it's four ounces, so it's much more than two hundred grams. It'd be about two hundred and two hundred thirty grams worth of fibre there. And I haven't decided whether to. Um, do a ply of the coloured and apply of the orange and ply them together. Or what I think I'll do is do them separate and then knit them kind of with narrow bands. So you get some plain orange and then some plain coloured, which is probably what I'll do, but I'm not sure. So that's spice pumpkin and pumpkin ale colours which were created by LCB. And both of those are on Rambouillet. There we go. Rambolo. And there's Leandra's Oh, So that's spinning fibre and also spinning plans. So Vlogtober's coming up. I have plans to do the spinning. I've got plans for autumnal knits. Just like it's so many autumn things. And yeah, lots of other things happening too. Hold on, I'm just sitting on my notes. So what else have been up to? Like I said, I went on holiday. I went away for a week. Um, I spent a few days in Southampton with my sons, uh, especially with that older one, because my youngest has been up here for a month. Um, just to stuff, you know. My oldest is nearly 21, so he's... Mm, stuff. 
Um, then I spent two days in Glastonbury. Two, no, three nights in Glastonbury. Three nights in Glastonbury, which was really nice. I finally got to go to the White Spring. Every time I've gone to Glastonbury, um, the White Spring's either been closed on the days that I've been there or the days when I have been there, I've been doing other things. Like I went to the Goddess Conference a couple of years back and your, your days are so packed full that I just didn't get the opportunity to go up. And the White Spring's only open certain days of the week um, and certain hours of the day. So finally got there, loved it, amazing. I don't know if you heard that, but that's another cat at the door. There with me again. That will be Holly. She has a very cute squeak. Didn't. Come on, you say hello too. You say hello. There. Um. She. Willow doesn't meow. She kind of like kind of croaks, and Holly doesn't meow. She squeaks. You squeak. Yeah, you squeak. Yeah. Um. So yes, got to go to the White Spring and did a couple of workshops, got some healing done and really just enjoyed myself. Then from the Friday through to the Sunday, I was up in Inverness. Um, if you don't know, if you've not seen an episode before where I've mentioned it, but I'm part of a roller derby league called the Orkney Vikings, which is the UK's most northerly roller derby league. And we had our first um, proper game since the league started. The league's only been going for sort of 18 months and we played against Inverness um, Roller Derby. Inverness, Inverness City Roller Derby. And we lost, but it's our first game. They've been in the league for like seven years. Um, but we did really well. I wasn't skating. I haven't yet passed my minimum skills. But I was doing something called, I was an NSO, which is a non-skating official. So we, Roller Derby... If you don't know anything about roller derby, it's two teams and you have five players from each team on the track at any one time, so ten players total. Two of those players are called jammers and the other four are blockers. One from each team is pivot, but they're blockers as well. So the idea uh, is you have like, imagine these are two jammers, here yeah, on the track, two, one from each team and all your other blockers are over here. The jammers have to get past all the blockers and then they spring walls skate around the track i'm trying to watch in the screen at the same time so i do apologize around the track and then they have to get past the blockers again and go around the first time they go through the pack they don't score any points but on the second time and subsequent times they score points for the amount of opposing blockers they pass the problem is these the blockers and the opposing team are trying to stop them getting go past and that means pushing and shoving and so on. People get injuries in this game. Um, but you'll see lots of refs to watch for penalties and such like. It's very easy to get penalties and such like. And lots of NSOs to do the different roles. So this time I was a scorekeeper and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was very nervous about the idea of being in an NSO, but I actually really enjoyed it. And if you ever get a chance to do roller derby, you should go along because you'll love it. I am not a sports person. I have hated sports. I really don't like sports. I like dancing um, or aerobic type stuff that's kind of rhythm and dancing and stuff like that. But roller derby, I love. I th first time I went, first time I heard we had one up here, my sister mentioned it and I thought, that sounds like a lot of fun. I used to like skating as a kid. I had a pair of roller boots. I could do this. It could be fun. I went along and I hated the first two weeks. Yeah, the first three weeks, the first six sessions I did, I cried. I hated it. I fell over and smacked me out a couple of times. We, you wear protective gear, helmets, pads, the lot. And I just, but I persisted and I really do enjoy it. I keep having the odd break from it, but I do really, really enjoy it. And I highly recommend going along. It is awesome fun it's we have skaters anywhere from late teens up to in their 50s it really is a variety i think one of inverness's um refs um he looked older than in his 50s i don't know i didn't ask but 
you know the, it really is a broad range of skaters that do this um and it's really really good fun you should try it <laughs> um so maybe i'll see you on track that would be fun <laughs> yeah so i think that's pretty much it that i've done there's been other bits but those are the main kind of things that's been happening I said I've got lots of plans coming up. I've got my mum up for a week. Um, she should be having lunch with my sister at the moment. I'm hoping to get this finished and get presents wrapped quickly. And then um, I've got to dye some more yarn for the shop update. And uh, yeah, it's the usual. But September's kind of a funny month. I will now I'm back home and settled in. I can get another, at least another podcast, maybe two this month. And then we're into October, so there'll be lots of videos coming up not just the podcast and they'll be supplementary to the podcast so um you don't have to watch the vlogtober videos um you won't be really missing anything from the podcast as well so yes i think that's about it from me um thank you for watching through at the end again it's going to be a long one i do apologize but now back home i can get them out more often and they'll be shorter which is excellent uh, I have some spinning planned, I have knitting plans, I have sewing plans, uh, so yeah. So thank you for watching through to the end, um, and if there's any information I've forgotten, I will hopefully put it up on screen, and there'll be all details down below. Feel free to hit like and subscribe and so on and so forth, and check me out elsewhere, especially on Instagram. Okay, thank you for watching, and bye-bye.